On the line right now, D.C. Planning Director Harriet Tregoning. Uh, she's here to talk about whether or not we should raise the height limit on buildings in the District of Columbia. Harriet, how are you today? I'm good. How are you, Brian? Uh, I'm very well. We're we're doing great this morning. So here's my question. I, there is some confusion about why the buildings are limited. I mean, I always heard, well, they can't have a building that's taller than the Capitol Dome. I've heard it said, oh, we can't have a building that's taller than the Washington Monument. What is the truth about why we have height limits, and what are the height limits based on? Well, it, the truth is it, it started because we uh, we had a building called the Cairo that uh, – that, uh, that uh, in 18, I think, 94, rose up to 164 feet in the DuPont Circle neighborhood, and um, neighbors found it really appalling. So they did then what neighbors might do today. They ran to their government, their local government, who at the time was the U.S. Congress, and they passed the law to prevent buildings from being that tall in the future. Um, it's a, it's a, uh, the numbers themselves, the limit is 130 feet. Um, uh, that's the maximum uh, in every part of the city except uh, for a few blocks on Pennsylvania Avenue uh, where, where you can have 160 feet. Uh, but that's really based on fire safety. And, and so, so what, is the, what is the rationale for making them tall? Why do we need taller buildings? Well, we need taller buildings maybe um, in order to not have to have uh, uh, to change the character of many of our neighborhoods. We're a growing city. More than a thousand people a month now moving to the District of Columbia, and uh, and eventually, uh, you know, sometime well before the next hundred years, we're going to be facing a lot of pressure um, on housing and on uh, office space and just space to grow. So, Heck yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that this is, listen, this is a world-class city, and I'm sure that there is demand for taller buildings in this city, and it seems like an archaic law right now uh, keeping the city from growing. You had to testify, of course, because of the uh, the home rule uh, laws here in the district. You had to testify before Daryl Issa's committee yesterday. What feeling did you get from them as you discussed this? Well, I, I, I thought that the Congress was very, very interested in this question, and it's an interesting um, you know, it's, 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 it's an interesting uh, issue for the district. Uh, this is the first time anyone uh, in Congress has asked us, the District of Columbia, what we think of this law and whether or not it continues to serve us well. And honestly, it's, a, it's really a home rule issue. It's not so much about whether we, uh, we think buildings should be taller. It's about who gets to decide whether buildings should be taller. And, and honestly... The federal government changing the law doesn't make the buildings taller. That's a decision then we get to decide ourselves. Right. Uh, Harry Tregoning is our guest. She's the director of D.C. Office and Planning. We're talking about relaxing the current law on D.C. Um, heights, for heights for building. Uh, really quickly, is there a demand? Are you, if, if, if you were to relax the Height Act right now, uh, would there be a flood of companies and builders and developers who would say, finally, let's start building some real buildings in this city? No, absolutely not, because what, before there could be any taller buildings, we'd have to change our comprehensive plan. The council would have to pass that plan. The National Capital Planning Commission would have to approve that plan. Uh, and then it would go for, to Congress for and a 30-day holdover. Please, so, no, nothing would happen right away. Please tell me increased parking is a part of that plan. I mean, if we're going to start building up and adding more uh, residences and more businesses, you've got to force them to add more parking spaces in those buildings, right? Well, you know, not necessarily. The trend oh. isn't the trend isn't that we're the trend isn't that people are driving more; it's that they're driving less. But so, well, but hold on, Harriet. Harriet, we, you just opened up a can of worms, and I'm sorry, we got to go there. I, I, right. I know that wasn't our topic, but look. There are many people who drive down. The, I am told that 70% of the traffic in downtown D.C. is people circling looking for a parking spot. There are not near enough parking spots in this city, and yet you keep talking about doing away with parking spots and, and having less of them, fewer of them. Well, I'm not talking about doing away with them. I'm just saying we're gonna we're letting the market decide. Well, we're the bike lanes the, letting... the bike lanes certainly did away with some parking options. They did, with, they did away with very few parking options, and they got a ton of people out of their cars so that there's more free-flowing traffic and fewer and less need to park those cars that people would have otherwise been driving. But I hear you. Well, I mean, it, 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 isn't, isn't it part of the, the D.C. Office of Planning strategy to, to basically have people be on bikes and mass transit? And, and isn't, isn't there really, in effect, a war on cars in the district? Oh, no. Of course there's not a war on cars. We want you to have lots and lots of choices. And if your choice is to drive, we want to support you in that choice. But if your choice is to take the bus or take the train 
or to be able to walk, we want to support that choice too. Well, Harriet, I would just gently argue, <laughs> gently argue that if if if, if, if it's my choice to drive a car and you want to support that choice, it, you're not doing such a great job because I can't find a place to park my car. Well, no, there are, there is definitely parking. There may not be as much parking as you would like, but if we were a place that had free convenient parking everywhere, we wouldn't be a place that would have so many restaurants. We wouldn't be a place that would have so many stores or so many houses. Not if we ask that. Now, listen, I've lived in many other large cities in my lifetime, and when a new building gets put up, the, a big part of that building is a parking structure, either underground parking in that building or the first few floors of that building become parking. That's true for us, too. Okay, well, then, then, then we can increase parking as we add these uh, taller buildings. Here, well, we've reached agreement. This is fantastic. We, we can increase parking, meaning that the people who are building the buildings, or the customers who are going to use that building, can you know, put in the parking that they think those customers need. I'm just curious, Harriet Tregoning, how do you get to work every day? Uh, I bike or take Metro. Bike or take Metro. Yeah, see, there's the thing. You don't need to look for a parking spot. At well, I have a car. I love to drive, but it's not so convenient for me to take the car. It's not it convenient is, for but... anyone in this city. All right. yeah, so all right. getting back to the original topic, <laughs> I'm sorry we diverted, Harriet, but you're a good goose to let us do so. Hey, listen, uh, so when do you think it might be that we will see taller buildings in the yeah, district? I want a skyline. I want high rises. I mean, it, and it, it's going to be outside the monumental core of the city. It'll be out in, in the areas around that area right well you know congress hasn't decided what they're going to do so i don't really i don't really know but our recommendation was that was that yes it's, we have a lot more capacity it would be much more likely that we'd have taller buildings outside the monumental core but we're not we're never going to be a city of flat skyscrapers you know one of the things that is so great about our city is that we do have that relationship between the width of street and the height of buildings you know that 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 you know our tall buildings are still uh based on, on that relationship. All, what we want to do is get rid of the, the 130-foot uh, fire safety-based cap. All right. right. Well, Harriet, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. All right. Nice to talk to you guys. Yes, right. thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for coming on. We appreciate she, she it. She is a good sport. She didn't know we were going to start debating parking with well, her. Well, we, it just it happened. I, we didn't intend for But it. I'm a little worried. What's the point of raising the height limit if you're not going to go for skyscrapers? I want Trump to come down here. And right here well, in Chevy Trump Chase. Trump is here. Could do it right. No, but, but he's just taken over the post office. No, no, no. I want him in Chevy Chase right on the border building Trump Tower, D.C., the tallest building in America right here. How great would that be? That would be okay. See, you'd be into that, and it would, and no one would complain that it's well, bothering the monuments because it, it, it's like a cut. If it means that they six miles away I'd from bunk the monuments, them down more. I'm okay with that. <laughs> if it's going to be him, not so much. I want Trump right here, Trump Tower, D.C., baby, tallest <laughs> building in the world. We.